And this one is my favorite uh, because when I told her about it, she said, okay, I'm going to make a foam finger and it's going to say, I love Arabic. And for some reason, she wrote the number three on the top, but uh, there's five fingers instead of four. So I, I, I thought that was funny, but I, I really love the enthusiasm and how much these kids retained at the end of this class. I remember one student, um, I asked him in Arabic, he learned how to say, hello, my name is so-and-so. Um, I, so I, I approached him and I said, oh, Shua Smith, or what's your name? And he, he was sitting at a bench, he propped his foot up on the bench, his hand was out like this, and he told me, Anna, it's me, Andre. My name is Andre. <laughs> and then I got goosebumps, because it, it the, the enthusiasm is great, and you don't expect these kids to kind of immerse themselves in this language and eventually into the culture. So I was, I was, I was so excited and I was so happy to see these results. So going from this, I shift into my community service. Um, so I, I um, worked with a refugee organization. And again, when coming up with ideas for this project, I knew I wanted to do things <coughs> that I was passionate about. And then I would find connections later on, and for sure I did, and I'll discuss that in a minute. But uh, again, I worked with a refugee organization called Organization for Refugee and Immigrant, Su Immigrant Success. Uh, they're based in Manchester. And so the branch that I worked with was called Fresh Start Farm. So essentially what this is, is a, um, a branch that uh, works with new refugees or immigrants that come into the country. They provide them with a plot of land on a farm, and they uh, guide them into how to grow, grow produce, how to take care of, of, of your plot of land, and how to eventually sell that produce in farmer's markets. So it's essentially making these new refugees to, you know, who are completely new to this country, entrepreneurs and becoming independent, which is a very, very, very powerful thing. So uh, half of my community service was done on a farm. This is the farm where they provide plots of land to refugees. And I would uh, spend time weeding, um, and I gradually, over time, I got to uh, associate myself with the refugees, and I got to speak to them. And um, coincidentally, uh, some of the refugees were Muslim, and it was the holy month of Ramadan, so we were all fasting, we weren't eating or drinking, so we, we kind of shared that experience. And, um, one really nice refugee, her name is Fatuma, she offered me these vegetables like five minutes after I met her. And so I, I really, I really enjoyed that. And um, one thing I have to mention is, when I was taking a break one day, I saw a, a family of refugees working on their plot of land. And um, it was a mother and father and their kids, you know, weeding, and, you know, hacking at weeds. And I realized you know, my perspective of refugees changed, just how, uh, just as how the, the perspective of kids to the Middle East changed, mine did of refugees. And I realized the effects of leaving the country that you're, you're so tied to in your motherland, and how coming here, even though you may be able to get on your feet and become independent, that lineage of, of suffering, you know, goes from parents to children and their children. So, um, but when I wasn't on the farm, I was uh, in the office, their headquarters in Manchester, writing newsletters. And the newsletters were for the, for the um, uh, community supported agriculture members who would uh, subscribe to get a share of produce um, every week for four to six weeks. So I would uh, make them aware of what produce was currently in, and um, different ways they could use that produce and updates of, you know, specific refugee farmers on the farm. Uh, so this is a picture of Fatuma. Uh, and it, it just, I love this picture because it shows the pride that, that, that she has. And, and she's growing her own food and she's selling it and she's not depending on anyone else. And eventually from this program, refugees go on to, again, owning their own businesses and selling their own things and buying their own plots. Um, plots of land um, to, to, to grow produce and um, they, they had beautiful produce, they're a chemical and spray free farm so I, I trusted that everything that I was doing with this organization was great for these people in this community as well. So again, like I said, just as the perspective of the kids in the Arabic class changed, mine did as well with refugees and uh, the theme of this project for me was just broadening perspective just changing the way 
we see things um, from from you know going out and exploring new things, or ex you know exploring things in a way that you never did before, and and that was that was you know the even though there was no direct theme initially in this project, that was a theme that I was able to um, come to the conclusion with, and I'm really glad that I did. So, thank you. Uh, Sarah, I just have one. Now that this is over, do you think you'll continue to work with these organizations at all? Yeah, I actually, um, I now intern at this organization. I'm still writing newsletters for them, and um, now that the season is over, um, I mean, hopefully I can maybe start teaching classes there, because they teach like computer design and things like that. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you.